Hi, and welcome to another episode of the City of Flagstaff's Recovery Roundtable. My name is Jessica Drum, and I am the Director of Public Affairs for the City. And today we are going to be discussing the Resilient Neighborhood Networks with um, a member of the city's staff. And I will let my guest introduce herself. Great, thank you, Jessica. Hi, my name is Jillian Goulet. I am the Climate Engagement Coordinator with the Sustainability Section. Um, and as Jessica mentioned, I am here today to talk about the Resilient Neighborhoods Network, um, which is a new initiative in Flagstaff um, that we are really excited to sort of unveil to you today. Terrific. So, Jillian, can you tell us a little bit about what is resiliency, what does that mean, um, and what does resilience in Flagstaff mean? What is what what is this program? Yeah, absolutely. So, resilience is one of those words that you hear a lot of the time, um, but we're not totally sure what it means. Um, so, in our context, we think of this as bouncing forward. Um, so when we have um, troubles of any sort, um, any sort of events that happen, how can we respond to those in a way that makes our system stronger and how can we prepare for them in the future? So we think of these stressors in a couple different ways. Um, so we think of acute stressors and those are like the fires, the floods. Um, we can think of COVID, exactly. Pandemics are a great example of acute stressors. Um, and we also know that taking climate change into account, especially those fires and floods in Flagstaff, we're going to see more of them. Um, so in that regard, we need to prepare for more of those acute stressors. We also can think of chronic stressors. So for Flagstaff specifically, we think of high poverty levels um, and how can we make systems work better for everyone um, in response to those chronic stressors. But we also know that Flagstaff is already resilient. Um, so we know that people have been here for generations and have been figuring out how to adapt and survive. Um, so we want to acknowledge that while we're moving forward um, and just know that uh, we are aware of um, how people are adjusting and how they are choosing to live in Flagstaff, um, which is great. So with, with that good background and understanding that we are definitely in the midst of an acute stressor, um, what does the Resilient Neighborhood Networks, what does this program or this, uh, what does Resilient Neighborhood Networks do? How can uh, residents of Flagstaff get involved? What, what is it? Yeah, so this is a sort of framework to help communities um, self-organize. So it is based around your physical neighborhood where you live. Um, and in an ideal world, um, each neighborhood will eventually have one of these networks in place um, where neighbors can work together to um, engage in these purposeful resilience building activities. Um, so these activities can be something like a block party, something that builds that community and gets um, neighbors working together and getting to know one another. Or it could be um, a transportation A, a socially plan. distanced block party, right? <laughs> exactly, and I will get to some um, caveats that come with COVID on this a little bit later. Um, we're also thinking of different systemic um, changes. So walking around your neighborhood and identifying areas where there are not sidewalks. Um, we know that sidewalks are a huge indicator of resilience and the ability to respond to stressors. Um, we also want to highlight the resilience work that's already being done. Um, we know so many people, as I mentioned before, are already resilient in Flagstaff. They're already doing this amazing resilience work. So we want to be able to highlight that um, in ways that we haven't seen before. That sounds fantastic. So what are the what are the next steps? Somebody's watching this and says, you know, I don't know my neighbors that well, or I've recently moved here, or my neighbors have recently moved in, and I think that this is the type of activity that we could all benefit from. What should they do and what's next? What are, what are the plans? Great question. So we are still very much in the early stages of launching this program. Um, COVID has put this a little bit on hold for us. Um, we recognize that we can't do those big neighborhood gatherings right now, um, and that's okay because there are other options for things we can do. Um, so first, we want you to keep an eye on our website, on our social media, for when we are able to launch this website, um, so you can be aware of when everything is live and when this is ready to go. 
But the second thing that you can do right now um, is go to our website, which we can put in the description for this video. Um, mm -hmm. And there is a resilience learning guide on there. So it is a two to three page document that's just learning and uh, teaching you about the basics of resilience. Um, so this is a way that everyone can get on the same page so that we're all um, coming at this resilience building um, from the same place. Um, so it brings in a lot of background information um, from other cities even and what mm -hmm. they view resilience as. And it brings in um, Flagstaff specific examples of resilience. Um, and that is a great place to start, um, especially when we can't do those gatherings. Um, we need to start with that learning space right now. Um, yeah. So to take so, advantage of this time and be prepared for when we are able to be in person again and start thinking about your neighborhood, what resilience can mean, what those needs might be in your neighborhood currently and how you can advocate and work with your neighbors as, as the time as we're able to move this project forward or this the network forward. Exactly. Um, and then not relating specifically to the network itself, but on our website, we also have a page called Resilient Actions. Um, so there are actions that you can take right now in the midst of the pandemic um, that can help build resilience for yourself and for your community, um, which we will also put in the description. That is fantastic. Well, Jillian, thank you so much for taking the time to share with us and um, let us know what we can expect as, um, you know, in the future, related to resilient um, neighborhood networks and how people can start taking some of that important action now and so that they're ready and that they're able to incorporate that those steps into their daily life right now. So thank you so much for that. And you can see the link for that website below this video um, or above the video, excuse me. And be sure to check it out and learn more today. And thank you so much, Jillian, for joining. And we look forward to learning more about the um, Resilient Neighborhood Networks as it develops. Great. Thank you so much, Jessica.